Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. <clears throat> My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our series, Riding Out the Storm, a biblical response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to continue today. We're doing, doing a particular um, theme, which is the order of end time events. Uh, the last two uh, messages we dealt with two times ago the rapture of the church first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18 the last message we dealt with was uh, the day of the Lord first Thessalonians chapter 5 1 to 11 today we're going to talk about some other events that take place before and then after the rapture of the church and that will be in second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 title of this message is called holding back before we go any further let's stop and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us in what we say and do Father God may your Holy Spirit direct us may you receive all the glory and honor for everything that is said here today may you also perhaps draw one person to know you as personal Savior through this now we may we ask this all in Jesus name Amen follow with me please uh, let me find my place in second Thessalonians, where we'll start to read in chapter 2. I thought I had my Bible open there, but I did not. And here we are, starting in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Turn the page here, excuse me. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he has as God, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So this is someone's going to impersonate being God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know that what I what what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he ta be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, the overall theme of this series of messages here has been to disengage from conspiracies and theories of conspiracy, looking at these events to deal dealing with the word we want to look at the word first and last we want to use this current crisis as God would have us to use this in a correct way to point people to the gospel remembering the order of Romans 1 16 remember for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Gentile Still many have chosen conspiracy over bibliology, and then questions continue to come like this. This virus jumped from animals to people, so we must be at Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. This virus comes from China, and they are getting ready to march on Israel and the West, preparing for the armies of the East, the 200 million of Revelation chapter 9, verse 16. I'll just remind you some that in 1964, when Mao Zedong was still alive, he boasted in a Time magazine article that he could raise an army of 200 million easily. Another uh, common thing we've heard over is the Antichrist is hiding in a certain place, wherever. Just fill in the blank, if you wish. And this puts us in the tribulation period. And we have shown repeatedly through scripture that we are not in this time for a number of reasons. And the number one reason is the rapture has not yet happened. That was two messages ago. 
it precedes the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is an Old Testament Hebraism, which means the time of God's judgment, the day of the Lord. The prophet Joel spoke about the day of the Lord, and it was an immediate fulfillment in that time, and looks forward also to a fulfillment in times to come. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 18, speaks about the rapture of the church. Then, in chronological order, as we pointed out in the last two visits, the day of the Lord comes after the rapture. Note that Paul talks about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4. Then he speaks about the day of the Lord in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 to 11. It's purposely done like that. First the rapture, then the day of the Lord. Then the end times will come. Note the order. Our responsibility, as I mentioned last time and will mention again today, Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Busy yourselves. In the King James, it says, occupy until I come. The word means to make yourself busy with things to do. And what should we busy ourselves with things to do? Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20, share the gospel. This is what we're here to do. This is the church. This is the church age. Our responsibility is to share the gospel, not be looking for conspiracies, not to be looking to blame who brought this uh, virus into the world. Uh, it's a hoax. It's this or it's that. We're here to share the gospel. We should expect opposition. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says specifically that, that someone who will live for the Lord should know that they will live a life where there will be opposition. We are being used now of God as part of the church to hold back evil. And that's what our passage is about today, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 12. I'm going to give a very quick overview of what this passage is about in the time allotted to us. Verses 1 to 2 speaks about our gathering together. Look again, it says, We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. That takes you back to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. This is the rapture. And note, if you read this here, it precedes what's going to happen after it precedes what will be excuse me, what will be described that happens after the rapture in verses three and following. And we know that they, we should not be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter. This is verse 2. As from us that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, don't be listening to people who will tell you things that are false. We're looking for the Lord to come for us. And until he comes for us, our responsibility here is to be serving him here. Occupy until I come. So, in verses 3 and 4, we read here that that day will not come except a falling away happens first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now look at the order. The rapture of the church, again alluded to in verses 1 and 2 of this chapter of 2 Thessalonians 2. Now Paul says nothing will happen after this until the rapture has taken place. And then, don't be deceived, that day will not come except it comes a falling away. Now, this falling away is, is manifest in many ways. It's the final apostasy or repudiation of Christian faith that will occur at the, the appearance of the son of perdition. And that's what the, the verse is speaking to here. Ed Heinsohn very clearly sets it out like that in his comments on this verse. So the man of, of sin is revealed. And this we know to be the Antichrist. He is revealed, and note the order again. The rapture, as referred to in verses 1 and 2, then comes the day, and when that day comes is when the uh, Antichrist will be revealed to the world. But the church is removed first. So we're not in the end times uh, uh, events yet. We're in events perhaps that are foreshadowing leading up to the end times and there is a picture of things that could could happen during the end times. There will be pestilences worldwide and illness and various things that the world will not be able to cope with. But we're not at that place yet. In verses 4 and 5 we read that this man of sin will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God. He will declare himself as God. In verse 5 he reminds them again, the Thessalonians, and we remind ourselves here today in the same way. 
Remember, we've studied these things before. This is uh, the beginnings of evil that will take place in those last days. But note what it says here in verse 6. And now you know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, and only he be taken out of the way. As long as the church is here, the Holy Spirit working within us and in the world through the church is holding back evil. This is the restraining of evil, and this is what verses 4, 5, and 6 speaks about. And when the church is removed, the wicked will be revealed. The repudiation of true Christian faith will be uh, made forward. And whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming, that will be the end fate of the Antichrist. He'll be tossed alive into the lake of fire, along with the false prophet. You read that at the end of the book of Revelations. Evil is being held back now. Now, some people over the years have taught that when the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit goes with the church, and there's no Holy Spirit. And that's why evil is let loose. I remember being lectured on that by Dr. Walvoord one time, and he said, that does not the way it happens. If God is omnipresent, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave because the Holy Spirit is God, and he will be here. He is everywhere. He is God. And he is going to be here even during the events of the last times. But he will stop restraining evil at that time. And this will be through his permissive will to allow the things to happen in those last days that will prepare the final coming of Jesus with us, the church, the raptured church. We return with Jesus in Revelation chapter 19 and 20. This restraining of evil will continue as long as the church age is in effect. We as the church are here and we are doing the work that God has called us to do. And the final working of his deceit in verses uh, 10, 11, and 12 is all pointed out to us here with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God will orchestrate all of this in the end, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, verse 12, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And God will judge this. Now, it's easy to be cond condemning and condescending and thinking that we're smarter and better than anybody else. But we need to know this, that we all are sinners ourselves who are part of God's called up people to church, who are saved by grace. There is none of us who are found righteous, not one as God's word says, and only by God's grace are we declared righteous by God himself. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 makes it very clear. For by grace are you saved through faith, but not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, lest any man boast. In simple terms this, you can escape those last days horrific events where the Antichrist will rule this world, destroying as many people as he possibly could and can, because he, he is at work for Satan. And Satan hates you, hates every single human being who has ever lived because we've been made in the image of God. He wants to destroy you. He wants you to think that there is no God. There is no salvation. This whole Jesus story is, is false and it's a fake and it was created by men who were just looking to make money. Any kind of excuse. I've heard all kinds over the years. But I will tell you this. The more I have read in God's Word and the more that I have pieced together His program for the end days and his, his sending of Jesus for us. Looking at Jesus, all the prophecies speaking to his first advent, all being fulfilled, I have not been disappointed yet to see that every single one of those prophecies that have been fulfilled fell into place to the letter. And not only did they fall into place, but they point to the ones not yet fulfilled, which means they will be fulfilled to the letter. And this is one thing for certain. He's coming for the church, and he's then going to eventually after that, sometime after the, he takes us out of here, he will 
allow for the end time events to take place and this man of sin will be revealed and he will make a seven year peace treaty with Israel. Read Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 27. Timeline to the Messiah. You will see there that he will do these things just as it has been written. And we exist to warn people about the last days, to tell people about the last days, so that they may be drawn to want to know who God truly is and who the Messiah truly is. And I don't care if you're Jewish or Gentile, Jewish like me or Gentile like anybody else. God has a purpose for you. And perhaps by listening to this message today, he is drawing you to him. If you have questions about what you've heard here today, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at ron at ihopecanada dot o r g, or you can send uh, you can check out our webpage triple w dot ihopecanada dot o r g, where Israel's Hope Ministries we exist to tell others about Jesus. That's why these videos go out. We're happy to be used of the Lord to answer your questions about the Scriptures. Get in touch with me. We also exist by trusting God by faith to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis. God's people participate in that. And if you feel led of the Lord to be a part of the work of Israel's hope by donating, you can go to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. And there you can find, you can uh, give by an e-transfer in Canada. You can uh, give by PayPal in Canada or the U.S. or anywhere in the world. Or if you wish to, you can send a check. You'll find our, our uh, mailing address there, Box 47031, Blackburn Post Office, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1B 5P9. If you are in the USA and want to help the work of Israel's Hope in Canada, you can send a check to I Hope USA. 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio, 44450. Just remember to put on the memo line, um, Israel's Hope Canada, for the work here. We appreciate everybody who looks in and your comments that come to us, and we thank you today that you've looked in on us. Let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct this time. Father God, thank you again for each person who has been here. We ask that you give them blessing by the things that they have heard. Maybe draw one person to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, shalom.